Okay, uh, let's see. So, Catalina, how did that go? I went back even yet again <laughs> and changed the story chart, but I knew at that point you'd already written several paragraphs, so I didn't bother you about it. Yeah, it was kind of hard to break it down, but I think eventually it did work. So. Okay, well, I've got, a, I've got a better story chart now, and I put it on my website. You can look and see if you think. It's always hard for me when I first make a story chart. Sometimes I'll go on for years revising story charts for the same book. <laughs> but it's always hard for me when I first make a story chart for a book. I always say too much, you know, then I have to go back and I have to start cutting things out. <laughs> Did any of y'all have to do that while you were writing your um, body paragraphs? Did you find out you had too much? No? Okay. Um, it's not as hard when the book is shorter, but it still can be pretty challenging. I mean, I found it easier to write a review for a, a story chart for Lord of the Rings than I did for Bronze Bow. So, <laughs> okay. So let's see. I'd love to hear a few intros. Y'all are going to be so happy today with the lesson because it's going to be fun. Okay. I've That's what you're saying about the English papers. I still have yet to experience this fun you speak of. Oh, well, this one actually is fun. It's really just purely creative writing. And actually, all writing is creative, even if you're writing a report, because, um, yeah, that's right, Cooper. It's only three paragraphs. Cooper's already checked it out. Um, um, all writing is actually an activity of creativity. But usually when people say creative writing, they're thinking of something that they just kind of come up with out of their own brain. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I understand what people mean when they say creative writing, but you all have been doing creative writing all year because you have been creating the things that you wrote. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But this is purely creative writing. What is pretty easy, Haley? The lesson we're about to do. Oh, you've done writing from pictures before? Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's really fun. And um, it even for somebody like me that doesn't tend to think in terms of making up stories, um, it's even fun for me. So if it's fun for me, it has to be fun for most of the rest of the world. <laughs> Um, and some of you need to get in touch with your creative side. Um, I need to get in touch with my creative side. Now I'm very creative with a lot of things. I'm creative with my writing classes, my handbooks, uh, my story charts, my decorating of my house. Um, sometimes I'm creative with the way I cook, but my main, my main goal when I'm cooking is just to get it done. <laughs> so um, I can be creative, though, when, I'm, when I need to be with cooking. But when it comes to writing, I've told you all before that I just prefer to do nonfiction writing and let my creativity be in my style and in my, my thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. But... Um, this is what I would call pure creative writing, and it's a good, and there's a nice little stepping stone, which is a series of three pictures that you're going to be using. So it's not like you have to totally invent everything just out of your own brain. Okay? Okay. So it's a good little in-between. Who in here has done writing from pictures? I think I've asked y'all before that who, who all has done this. Okay. All right. Well, those of you who haven't are going to probably enjoy it more than what you just did. <laughs> Who's, who enjoyed the book review process? Cross, Haley, uh, Jacob Soso. Um, I like how you said probably. <laughs> probably, yes. Oh, another thing that I have to share with you is that um, 
John Shaw was sharing with me over the, um, uh, I guess, over the sometime the last weekend or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. About this AI chat thing. Oh, chat GBT. Yeah. And he was showing me how that works, how people can just do a paper by just giving an idea to, okay, so I just want to warn y'all ahead of time, don't ever do that because there is a way that, that, that teachers can figure out whether or not you used AI to, to do your writing, okay? John, showed, John Shaw showed me how on a screen share. Um, hey, no, you don't need to dox me like that. <laughs> um anyway i was i was fascinated and horrified at the same time it's okay, really but, cool but john shaw i was thinking about that um issue about with the numbers in there how it wouldn't recognize it if you went back and put the sentence numbers mm -hmm. so what a what a teacher would have to do is just remove all the style markings yeah, and probably. then just and then just copy and paste into the AI to check and see if it came out of AI. Sounds right. You know, so um, they will figure out easier ways to catch people that are doing this. So don't ever put yourself in a position where you've done that because it will ruin your future if you if you get caught. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I don't think anybody would do that in uh, uh, in this class or in any of, I don't think any of my students would do that, but I'm just warning you because sometimes when you get into college and things get really tight time-wise, you might know people all around you that are doing these things and seemingly getting away with it. And you might be tempted, even if you're not a dishonest person, you might be tempted to do that. Okay. Okay. But they will figure out a way to catch people doing this. And you don't want your whole future to be ruined because of procrastination. Okay? okay. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I have caught a few, chil a few students over the past 20 years actually plagiarizing. Um, I could tell because it didn't sound like the way that they wrote. Um, and that's always been very unpleasant for me. All I did was copy and paste it into a plagiarism checker and up it came. And so, um, and it'll give you a percentage of how much of it was plagiarized. It doesn't even have to be the whole thing. It can be 80% or 50% or whatever. So never ever try to take a shortcut like that. Always start when you're writing for anybody with your keyword outline and write from your keyword outline and follow the directions and then you won't ever be in a position where you are accused of that. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, you may get called into the professor's office like a couple of my students have over the years. I've told you all about that, right? Mm -mm. The student, okay. Um, okay, well, let me just tell you really quickly. I know of two students, and there's probably more, because my students, by and large, all of them are good writers. They do the work. They learn how to do the writing. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if they're the best writer in the world. They're always up at the top of the class because um, that's just the way things shake out, okay? But I have had two people in the past however many years that I know of because one girl told me and then another girl's mother told me where they were actually accused by the professor of plagiarizing because as the one girl professor said students your age can't write like this she was convinced that somebody was doing her work for her and i said what did you do i said did you write something she said no and um i said she said well finally by the end of the semester she told me that that she realized I was doing my own work and she stopped harassing me but she never actually apologized the other girl the professor actually made her come into her office and sit and write an essay in front of her while she watched so she could make sure she wasn't cheating 
And then after she passed that with flying colors, the professor admitted that she had been doing her own work. Okay. Yeah. So um, you will, you might get some flack because you write so well. All of you have that potential. Okay. okay. Um, but don't ever put yourself in a position where it can be proven that you cheated because they will find you if you do. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and I, it's it's a great pride of mine that some of my students have been accused of cheating because they wrote so well. Okay. okay. I'm sorry they had to go through that, but I am so proud of them. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you know, you wrote well when even the teacher can do cheating. You know. When the teacher says that some, apparently some full grown adult who writes papers wrote your work for you because you just can't possibly write that well because you're- Because yes. Because, because you're a young person? That's just sad that somebody has that opinion, I guess because they haven't seen enough young people that actually can write, okay? Okay. Okay, so that's your little pep talk for today. I was very enlightened, horrified, fascinated, and I don't know what all other words I can use. <laughs> when John Shaw showed me, sorry, John Shaw, y'all won't hold this against John Shaw because you're not going to be doing this anyway, okay? Okay. And then the coolest part was he copied and pasted his um, paper that he had written. <laughs> let's, let's see, you did The Hobbit, right, John Shaw? Yeah, I did The Hobbit. He copied and pasted his paper into the, what do you call that thing? Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. And he asked. I asked him to write a poem. Oh, he asked him to write a poem from his paper. Mm -hmm. And it did. And yep. then he also asked it to write a, I don't know if you said, what is this paper about or something like that. And it did yeah. like this analysis paper of John Shaw's paper. Yep. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. So you can have fun with it if you want to. Just don't ever use it for something that you're supposed to be, have written yourself. Okay? Okay. 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 So uh, imagine nobody ever thought in teaching English that they'd ever have to come to this point. We all thought copy and paste was bad enough, but now... There's this whole new thing to have to worry about. So, okay. I would love to hear some intros and conclusions. Who can share with us from their paper? I can. Come on now. I know some of you must like what you wrote. Hey, I heard about docs today. I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> John Shaw, I, I I am sorry. You're, you're just, I'm you're teasing just pulling, you. You're just pulling my leg, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll keep Let's... one eye open and then I don't. Don't you worry. <laughs> yes. If you find out any new stuff, we need to know. And uh, I might have to do an interview with you and post it on my website about what you figured out about all this stuff. That would be something. Okay. That would be something people would be interested in. Well, I'm having a lot of fun using it, so no problem. Okay, Trey, I'm curious about how you started your paper because Trey got inspired by Catalina's opening with the climax in her Yeto Bay paper. And then he asked me permission to start with the con, was it the conflict? Okay, why don't you read well, me your intro and conclusion? I can do it a little later. I don't have the paper with me now. It's on my mom's computer, but I can print it. Okay. And um, I can. Well, if you'd it. like to, I'm not going to insist, but if you if you would like to do that, okay. Who, who can go? Uh, Haley. Oh, Catalina. Okay, go ahead, Catalina. Tell us the book that you. Well, we'll we'll we should be able to tell what book you wrote about. So go ahead. Um, my and title. Tell your, yeah, tell us your title. My title is Return to the Distant Past. Traveling back in time 2,000 years to the faraway land of Israel, leaders of the blonde bow experience a glimpse of what life was like in this distant, mysterious age. Published in 1961 by um, Houston Mifflin, 
The Bronze Bow is a novel of historical fiction and the winner of the 1962 New Bailey Medal. The author, Elizabeth Deutsch Spiel, who lived from 1908 to 1994, won several prestigious awards and prizes for her novels. She lived in New England, which became the setting for all her novels except the Bronze Bow. Due to her thorough in-depth research, her novels are historically accurate. Although she was a talented writer from a young age, she did not start her writing career after, until after completing a degree, marrying and having two children. After writing two books set in New England, she wanted her third book to be set in Israel in the 20s or 30s AD and to include Jesus. One Sunday, shortly after she received the 1959 New Bailey Medal for her novel, The Witch of Black Blue Pond, she was in church listening to the organ prelude when the climax and ending of the bronze bow began to de develop in her mind so vividly that for the rest of the church service, she was aware of nothing else. Extensive <laughs> research followed. When she, when she finally began to write, her main character was a girl, but she soon realized this would not work because girls mostly stayed home in those times. Eventually, she created the main character, Daniel, and slowly a wonderful story unfolded very differently from what she had expected. The book ended up taking several years to write, which resulted in an extremely convincing, accurate, and unique story. Wow, that is fascinating. That reminds me of what Tolkien said about his characters and stories. He says he, he, he something like he writes, to, he would write to find out what happened. I mean, he thought the story was there. He was just there to discover it. You know, that sort of sounds like her. Okay. Now I've got the uh, intro. I've got my intro. No. Okay. Go ahead with your conclusion, Catalina, and then we'll let you go next. Try. All right. The time period and setting of the bronze bow make it a very unique story. Because it is so historically accurate, the book realistically portrays what life must have been like during, during Roman times. The book is filled with vivid descriptions that create clear images, especially of scenery and suspenseful fighting scenes. Throughout the book, Spill uses foreshadowing by hinting several times at the growing affection between Daniel and Tisha, leading up to the very end when they make their silent vow to marry. Additionally, she uses the symbolism of the bronze bow, inspired by a scripture passage which states that with God's help one can bend a bow of bronze. Daniel, Joel, and Thesha use the bronze bow as a secret sign and a symbol to remind themselves of their vow to fight for the freedom of, freedom of Israel. As the story progresses, Daniel becomes more and more filled with his growing hatred and anger, although he also begins to show many admirable qualities, especially patience and caring while taking care of Leah. However, he always continues to have moments when his anger overpowers his reason and sense, causing him to act rashly and violently. As the story builds up to the climax, Daniel has become completely consumed and controlled by his hatred. At the climactic moment of Daniel's conversion, he finally realizes that revenge and hatred are not what will give him true freedom, because what has really been keeping him from being free is not the Roman power, but his own anger and hatred. Only love can free him. In this way, the theme of vengeance versus love is powerfully presented. Blonde's bow is certainly a convincing, realistic, and intriguing book that takes the reader back to the distant past with a powerful ending and a profound message. Oh, wow. Wonderful. You know, I never read that book until, I don't know, let's see. It was in 2020 because I read it while I was taking care of my nephew who was having a liver transplant, and that was in 2020. And um, I was just, I, you know, I found a lot of great books myself growing up, including Witch of Blackbird Pond, but somehow I never was aware of that one. So it's really great if y'all want an exciting book to read. It's exciting. It's very deep, I think. You know, it's it's perfectly uh, fine for a totally grown person and for a young person. I have a, a friend, um, um, let's see, Trey, um, Abigail, um, 
who has read that book, I don't know how many times she she told me it's her favorite book and she wrote a paper about it. I think it was a character analysis in level two. So good job. Okay, let's see. Trey, you want to read us your intro? All right. Okay. And read your title. An Inspiration of Middle Earth. When a hobbit treks away from his home to try to save 13 dwarves from misery, will he ever return? This is the conflict from The Hobbit, a novel that keeps people on the edge of their seats. J.R.R. Tolkien, who authored this epic, is famous for many other exhilarating tales. Undoubtedly, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is his most famous saga. Tolkien was a Christian. In many of his books, he used symbolism to point to the spiritual world. In this book, Gandalf seems to be a god figure, Smog represents Satan, and Bard brings to mind a Jesus figure when he saves lives by killing Smog. Although The Hobbit was mainly written for older children, it is adored by many adults as well. The Hobbit is considered an epic because it has very eloquent language and heroic characters. Incorporating action, suspense, and adventure, Tolkien creates a masterpiece adored by many. Ooh. Super. I love that. I totally agree with everything. <laughs> Do you have your conclusion there? Yes. Okay. Undoubtedly, The Hobbit is a book that everyone should read. It has terrific action and astoundingly realistic characters. The engaging style and powerfully presented themes of courage and believing in oneself make this story very intriguing. The main character becomes braver and more determined. The conflict, rising action, and climax keep people glued to the pages. On a negative note, the conclusion is unsettling. People ask, what happens next? Also, as the book progresses, there are no lessons to learn. Using some formal language, the author writes words that are difficult to comprehend as well. However, Tolkien is a pro at commanding style. When he uses very short sentences and quality adjectives, it takes the story to another level. The characters are also described realistically, which makes them easy to see in people's minds. Overall, because there is much action, a suspenseful climax, and well-developed characters, this story is exciting, fascinating, inspiring, and gripping all at once. Ooh, super. I agree. I'm not sure that I agree with the part about there's no, less, there's no lessons to be learned, but that's okay. That's what you think. But I, um, I, I love that. I love that book. Um, and if you ever listen to it read, like not not like live action audio, I don't mean that. OK, I mean, somebody with a who is a good narrator reading Tolkien's works, you start to hear this ancient literature sound. He had taken in so much of that. That was his thing. He was the chair of the um, department, I think the Department of Ancient Literature. I can't remember exactly what the, the department was that he was in charge of, but he was soaked in it. And so when he wrote, it just came out of his, in his writing. And so that's one thing, like when we do style, you just soak yourself in style so that when you actually write, it comes out and it sounds like Tolkien, but it also has all these echoes of ancient literature in it too. It's fascinating. It's especially noticed in Lord of the Rings. So, okay. Uh, who would like to read next? We won't read all the papers, but I'd love to have at least one other person. Me? Oh, you go, Anna Rude. Okay. Uh, wait, so. Certainly the book Big Wave succeeds in capturing the attention of the reader till the end. The Big Wave is a tale, tale written by Pearl S. Buck, who is the author of many distinguished books for children and adults. Pearl S. Buck expectedly won the Students Association Children's Book for the Big Wave and also the Pulitzer Prize for the Good Earth. She received the Nobel Prize because of her amazing stories. Born on June 16, 1892, Buck learned English and Chinese. Tutored by a Chinese person named Mr. Kyung, she was eager to learn the language. Writing was her hobby. The Big Wave is a story that touches the hearts of the reader as it depicts the values of relationships to which people can easily connect to. Wow. In That's the a great intro. 
Okay. In the conclusion, Gia, who is the main character, starts living by the sea. He overcomes his fear and starts a family with Setsu. Undoubtedly, through descriptive writing, Pearl S. Buck enables reader to visually capture the story. The events that lead up, lead up to the conclusion is absolutely touching as the re readers near the end of the book. Admired by many, the book is phenomenal for readers who enjoy stories about relationships. The story is simple. It is also immensely touching because it deals with Jia's enduring loss. While the saga of the big wave takes readers on a roller coaster of emotions, it is an absolute must read for growing teens as it has a lesson about strong and courageous during essential growing years. Oh, wonderful. Eloquent. Yeah. Honey Rude. Um, I agree with you. And I didn't read the big wave till I was totally grown and it had a good effect on me. So. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Catalina, are you raising your hand? No? I was just doing the little the accent. Oh. <laughs> Is it, was that a clap? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, you know, I always forget about those little things there. Oh, oh, good. Trey's clapping too. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, I'm looking forward to reading your papers. Um, I had got a surprise last week, I think it was on Tuesday of last week, when my son, that he and his wife have the new baby, called me up and said, we are, um, we're homesick, and we don't have to go back to work until the 1st of April, and so we're coming, we're coming home for a visit next week. <laughs> so they're coming tomorrow, and bringing the baby, so I won't get any paper grading done until next week. Oh, I think I need to look at this calendar and for us to make sure that we know what our schedule is. Today is the 21st. Yes, the 21st. And so this time we do not have classes until three weeks from today. OK, and the reason that is the case is because I always give an extra week off between classes for spring break so that over spring break, you won't have to worry about writing homework. Now, y'all, who all has already had a spring break wherever it is you live? Anybody? Cross, Catalina. OK. Well, I don't know when your spring break is, but the reason we have to have spring break this week in Augusta is, it's not this week, it's actually week after next, is because we have this little golf tournament called the Masters, which is the first full week of April every year. The only time since World War II that that didn't happen was, guess what? 2020. Yeah, the year of COVID. And when they canceled the golf tournament that year, I was like... Doom, doom, doom. Something really bad is coming because they never cancel the golf tournament. It doesn't matter how terrible the weather is. It doesn't matter that it's Easter week. It doesn't matter. It's always the first full week of April. So, um, so this time you have, you know, the rest of this week off, of course. I mean, this is just a regular class week. Next week, would be like your last week, and then you've got the first full week of April to get your spring break in. Use it however you want to. Talk to your mom. Yeah, okay. Um, Y'all figure out what your schedule is, but since it's three weeks from today when we have, our, have to bring our homework back, the real temptation is to do what with your writing homework? Procrastinate. Procrastinate. Yes. So I've actually got you scheduled off for spring break for the first full week of April. OK, so what I suggest is that you go ahead and you do your writing this week and next week, just like you normally would and get it over because you don't want that hanging over your head, do you? No. No. Get it done. And then you can have that first full week of April as your spring break. OK, so I won't be grading any papers this week. I'll work on grading them next week after my family is gone. 
Um, but so don't don't worry. Don't get anxious about the about the grades because that's not going to happen in the next few days. And these are longer papers and they take me longer to grade. So I would say probably not till the middle or end of next week. Um, <clears throat> Y'all have been doing very well. I'm very pleased with your writing and I expect to enjoy the papers when I read them. Okay. All right. Um, I was very happy with the grades. The grades were, were, there were no bad grades on this paper, on this past paper that I just gave back to you. Did everybody see my comments? Yes. Okay. Y'all did super. Um, and I think it helped that I gave y'all a keyword outline so that you could see how you go about making a keyword outline for something like that. And um, I hope that helped you when you were thinking about your own keyword outline for this this paper we just finished. Did that, did that help having done it the other way first? Okay. All right. So now let's talk about the fun things. Okay. Um, writing from pictures. Now, Sometimes, uh, let's see, remind me in here of who has a hard time thinking of a story just out of their own head. I know I do. Who else does? I can okay. think of a story. I just can't write it. I think you can now, John Shaw. Uh, you're probably right. I couldn't write it. I think you actually probably could write anything you wanted to at this point. So, but I can understand. But so you can actually think of the stories. You just didn't know how to go about putting it together. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I couldn't get the the the, uh, the words on paper. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I think you've overcome that. So let's talk about writing from pictures and look with me on page <clears throat> 49. Now, one, one thing that we worked on when we were working on our three paragraph stories is um, writing descriptively. And I, what do I mean when I say writing descriptively? What does that mean exactly? Um, Using like lots of adjectives. Yeah, what kind? Like descriptive adjectives. <laughs> what are descriptive adjectives? I got a whole section in your handbook of those. What are they? See, I'm going to give you a clue. Sense adjectives. Yeah. yeah, the five senses, right? And what and emotions? We also include those. What are the five senses? And wait. Sight, smell, sound, taste, and touch. Exactly. Okay, so when we write descriptively, what we want to do is put um, senses into our readers' brains. We want to help them see what we're describing. We want to help them hear it if there's sounds. We want to help them smell it if there are smells, taste, feel. And then also experience emotions, okay? Um, Tolkien was a master at this. I remember also somebody who was very, very good at it was Mark Twain. Um, and so I remember when I decided I was going to have my children take dictation, they were in, I don't know, third or fourth grade. I was going to read them like a paragraph and have them write it down. And I decided to pick a really exciting one. And I picked the bridge of Kazadoom out of the Lord of the Rings, where he's standing on the bridge with their running and then the Balrog shows up. I don't know if any of y'all know what I'm talking about. I started reading it because I loved that, that scene. I thought it was so dramatic, so descriptive. And I started to read it to my kids for them to write down. And I realized they weren't even complete sentences. They were like these phrases and these punchy broken pieces of things 
And they just kind of went on and on and on. I was like, he's written a whole bunch of run-on sentences and some of them aren't even complete. And, and I was just, I gave up. I never even went back to try to do dictation with them. I was really, I was really fed up, but I realized later when I went back and looked at it, that this is, that's a running scene. And Tolkien is trying to give the impression of the breathlessness and the fear of the, of the characters running and he used these techniques. He certainly knew the rules of written English. There's no doubt about it. He intentionally broke them. Now, listen to me carefully. I'm not giving you all the permission to break grammar rules in this paper. Okay. But what I am saying is that what you want is for your readers to experience what you're, what you're trying to tell them. Okay. Mark Twain said, don't just say the old lady screamed. Bring her on and let her scream. <laughs> so um, Mark Twain tried to give his readers an impression of what things sounded like and what they looked like. And um, he was masterful at it, just like Tolkien. And if you think to some of your favorite writers, if you go and look at their things that they've written, you will probably find that same thing in your favorite writers. Okay. Um, so let's look at this on page 49. So um, some people are actually better at looking at a picture or a series of pictures and thinking of ways to describe it than other people are. Um, but this is just like anything else that you have learned. If you practice it, you will get what? Better. Better. Yes. So if this isn't really your thing, that's okay. You're, you're going to get better at writing descriptively just by practicing. That's what the really is the point of this paper. It's for you to practice describing an event by writing descriptively. Now, some of these pictures, in fact, all of them can lend themselves to doing an actual story structure, okay? And what goes in a story structure? You've just finished five weeks of writing based on story structure. When I say story structure, what do I, what do I mean? Uh, like, Like, let's the think of plot. Exposition. Conflict. Rising action. Rising action. Climax. Dama. Conclusion. Yes. Okay. You can do this in this story if you want to. But you don't have to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you do not have to do that in this story. But if you want to, you can. The main thing I'm interested in this story is you practicing describing what's going on in the pictures. And we're gonna do that by using our descriptive adjectives and emotions, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, also, there are other words that are descriptive besides just adjectives, and I, I'm aware of that. Um, and so if you do something like the bell clanged, clang is a verb in that sentence, right? It's not an adjective, but is it descriptive? It is. You can hear that, can't you? You know what it sounds like. Um or the tires screeched on the pavement. Is screeched a verb? Yes. But is it descriptive? Do you hear that sound when I say screeched? Or mother shrieked? But I'll, uh, well, some of you probably don't know what that sounds like to hear a mother shriek. My kids did. <laughs> And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, okay? <laughs> um, but there are other words that are not adjectives that are actually descriptive. So if you, you can mark those for a descriptive if you want to, okay? 
use complete sentences, use all your style. I don't want to see fragments here. I know that's real popular in young adult fiction to do these pieces of sentences. Can't do that here, okay? Um, and some people will say, but you just said Tolkien did it. Yes, and when you're a world famous writer, <laughs> you can do it too. <laughs> Tolkien knew the rules. He knew perfectly well how to write according to the rules of written English. And once he had really good command of that, he knew perfectly well how to break them in order to accomplish different writing tasks. Yes, Haley. He's an exception. Yes, and, and a lot of famous writers break the rules. Have any of y'all noticed this in writing that you've read? Um, but again, they didn't start doing that like right out of the box, okay? They did it, they had to learn how to write correctly just like you do, okay? Um, Ernest Hemingway uses a whole lot of things like that, and he Ooh. also uses lots of very short sentences, but nobody would dispute that Ernest Hemingway was a world-class writer, okay? But you have to really get a good hang of the rules, a good grasp of them in order for you to be able to break them and do a good job with it. <laughs> Three weeks, yes. Okay, so one way to go about ask about thinking about a picture is to ask questions about it. So if we're back to page 49 again, and you're gonna actually make a keyword outline about this. Yes, Trey. Um, just another descriptive thing. Adverbs can be descriptive. As yes, well. they can. They can. Um, all, all different parts of speech can be descriptive. Okay. So if you get a descriptive word, I, I hesitate to even say this because I don't want people getting confused. Okay. The description is in the actual word itself, not in the particular part of speech. Right. Verbs, very strong verbs can be very descriptive and, and adverbs can be too. Um, frantically is very descriptive, right? He frantically banged on the door. Okay, that would be very descriptive. Okay, um, <clears throat> so yes, Trey, thank you. All right, so the things that we want to ask ourselves, this is how we always get information about anything to think about. We get it by asking questions. You remember back at the beginning of the school year, we asked ourselves questions like, what are the three most important words in this sentence? So we can make a keyword outline. Then when we started writing longer papers, we, we, were doing, we asked things like, what are three topics about this subject that I think are interesting or important? And out of all the facts for this topic, what are the most interesting and important facts? Remember that? Mm -hmm. And that's how we got our information. And then with our stories that we did at the beginning of the semester this year, we asked questions like, what is the main problem going to be for my story? Who's the main character? Um, what do they think, say, do to try to solve their problem? Um, where does the most exciting moment happen? And then when you wrote your reviews just now, you kind of went through that same thing again, but you were actually asking questions about what somebody else had written, right? So we get information for our writing, not from AI, but from asking questions <laughs> about whatever it is we're trying to write. Okay, so here's some questions we can ask about writing from pictures. First of all, who is in the picture? What are they doing, thinking, feeling? This is on page 49. Why is this situation happening? When did this begin? Or what might have happened just before this picture? Doesn't have to actually be in the picture. Okay. What's the history behind this picture? Yes, thank you, Cross. Um, where, actually, where exactly is this or what might be just outside of the picture that we can't see? See, I'm giving y'all all kinds of permission. Okay, you don't have to just write about particular things that are in the picture. It needs to fit with the picture, but it can't contradict the picture. Let me put it that way. 
but it doesn't have to actually be in the picture, okay? Um, what might happen after the picture, maybe in between that picture and the next picture, or after the end picture, okay? So the more questions you can ask yourself, the better you're going to get about coming up with creative ideas, okay? It's also the core skill of thinking itself. And you ask yourself questions all the time about things, okay? Um, even about math. You look at a math word problem, you start asking, you read it, and you start asking yourself questions. If you're a non-math person like me, you ask questions like, what on earth is this even about? Why do I have to do this? <laughs> If you're a math person, you start asking questions like, what type of math problem is this? What information are they giving me? What formula do I know that fits with this? Okay, Cooper, yes. Or if a math person were to be doing math, they could be saying, this is too easy and boring. <laughs> right. Some math people, like my son Grant, and some of y'all are like this. You just want to write down the answer because you just look at it and you know who's in here, who in here is like that. Ah, okay, Jacob. I knew, I knew you people, Haley, Cooper, I knew you people were out there. Okay, um, that, that's really annoying when people have to show their work when they can just look at it and figure it out, right? Okay, but you really are actually thinking. It's just that your thinking is at a subconscious level. You are actually thinking super fast. What kind of problem is this? What kind of formula do I use to figure it out? Uh, blah, 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 blah. You're thinking of these questions, but you don't even know because you're doing it so fast and at such a subconscious level. But you're still asking those same questions. Okay? okay. So asking questions is a core part of thinking. That's how we think. We think by asking ourselves questions. It's just like most of the time we're not really aware of it. So the more aware we can become of our questions, the better of a thinker and the better of a writer will be. Okay? I think that's kind of cool. Who thinks that's cool besides me? That we, think, we think by asking ourselves questions. I lost you, John Shaw. Yeah, I don't get that. You, okay, that's probably because you do a lot of thinking at a subconscious level and asking yourself questions. Are you calling me stupid? No, no. Actually, <clears throat> we all ask these questions. It's just we don't really always become aware of that we're asking these questions. So the more aware you can become of this question asking that's going on at a subconscious level, the better you'll be at retrieving that information and using it. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I think it's very exciting. I, I, never, I never knew that until Andrew Pudua pointed it out, the guy that is the IEW director. This is how we think. Okay, so, so I want you to think of this as an event description. Um, they have something in here that I keep thinking I'll change, but I don't, I haven't ever changed it. They want you to t use a topic sentence and a clincher. I don't care if you use a topic sentence and a clincher, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be the central idea in the picture, like they say. Um, you're going to have one paragraph for each picture. That's why it's just a three paragraph paper. Yay! Aren't y'all glad? You worked so hard these last three, last six weeks, and now you get to have something fun and kind of easy, okay? Okay. Um, let's see. Now let's look at an example. If you'll look with me on page, uh, wow, we're getting to the end of the example section. Um, look with me on page 119. And 118. Now, nobody's going to be writing this one, okay? And so I'm going to go through this, and, and we're going to look at this picture together. 
<clears throat> these pictures and we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Then we're going to look at a story that somebody else wrote using this. Okay? okay. So you can see the possibilities. Okay, so what's going on in this first picture of on 118? She's looking through the fridge. Okay. Now, let's see. We don't really know who she is, so we might want to ask ourselves these questions. Who is this in this picture? Now, you'll see a story somebody else wrote. It isn't really going to matter. That this isn't going to match uh, what this person is doing here. Um, what do you, let's see, who shall we call this person? Barbara. Wanda. Potato. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I'm trying to make this thing open. Okay. <laughs> okay. I heard Wanda and I heard, what was the other one? Somebody suggested another name. What was it? Barbara. Barbara. Okay. We can vote on Barbara versus Wanda. 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 Okay. We'll go with Wanda. All right. So we're going to call this woman Wanda. Let's see. Hide floating meeting controls. All right. <clears throat> okay. Tools. Sorry. All right. So this is what you will be doing. Y'all want to turn to page. Um, just on page 119 and be jotting this down so you can have something to look back at. I will try to post this on, um, on ThinkWave. Let's see. Let me get rid of this, these paragraph thingies. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, central fact of the picture. All right. So the first thing we ask is who is in the picture? Wanda. Oh, no. How did that happen? Okay, let's try it again. Okay, Wanda. And where, well, I'm sorry, y'all. Hmm. Tell me something about Wanda. Now, y'all will be, th be thinking through this, okay? You won't be just like writing it like before even thinking about it yet. But let's just, let's just, let's just think through and before we write anything down. And so um, who is Wanda? What is she doing there? Um, why is she looking in the refrigerator? Um, get something. When did it begin? What happened maybe just before the picture or even outside of the picture that we can't see? And what's the history of the picture? Okay. And then when we get down into the second part, we're going to, we want to ask ourselves, um, let's look at this. Y'all be thinking about that now. Okay. Now look at this second one here. And... What's, what's Wanda doing in this picture? Y'all give me some ideas. She's being in shock. Okay, she's shocked. Why is she shocked? There's no ice cream in the freezer. <laughs> Her potatoes grew. Or yogurt. Why is that a problem? Because she's hungry. Okay, she's hungry. All right. Um, and then, so this is why you have to kind of go ahead and think through all the pictures before you start writing your keyword outline, because what on earth is this in this last picture? Yeah. Maybe it's Ladle and then there is food or something. <laughs> Maybe it's what? Maybe it's like Ladle and then there is food. Okay. It's later. Okay, Cooper, what were you going to say? Could be just plain old potatoes in a bowl in a refrigerator that grew. Oh, yeah. Okay. Any other ideas? What could have happened 
was since she figured out that there was no ice cream in the freezer, she left the refrigerator door open and ran away, got in her car, and drove away to the store to get some ice cream. Oh, that's a good electricity. That's a good possibility. And uh, what what are we going to make of this plant? Or you know, you don't have to say anything about the plant that's in there. You can just totally ignore it. And just pretend it's a bowl of salad that's overflowing, or you could make something of the plant. What about it, Haley? It is just living in this fridge. It could, okay. be, it could be a green bean plant. A green bean plant. This is the magic bean stock. What's going on here? It could be the magic bean stock. Okay. You see how you're asking these questions? You see how we're asking the questions, and these ideas are starting to sort of percolate? OK, um, and this could be a very, oh, there's Ryan. This could be a very simple story about Wanda not having ice cream, or it could be a very in-depth story about something that Haley is now going to tell us about. <laughs> My thoughts are very violent right now. <laughs> Okay, tell us. There could be a knife with blood on it in there. Could be an actual what? A knife with blood on it. It could be. It sounds like a murder mystery. Hey, Ryan, how'd, how'd things go today? Good. Good. Glad to see you. We're on page 119, and we're talking about talking through a writing from pictures assignment. Okay, so that sounds kind of like a murder mystery there, Haley. <laughs> okay, so let's let's um just in the interest of time, let us assume why do I have my floating meeting controls back again? Okay, I remember I had to restart it, didn't I? Um let's assume that let's just do the simple um and is, is it okay if you write your own story and if it's very uh, mysterious and a murder mystery, is that okay? Yes. Okay. But just in the interest of time, we're just going to do a real simple one here. So we're just going to say, Wanda, okay, um, where does Wanda live? She lives in Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, maybe that would explain the plant. Wanda, I don't know why my, my word thing is messing up so much. Do y'all see that blue spinning thing? It's like, oh, I don't know. That's supposed to say Hawaii, okay? Um, she lives in Hawaii. Um... Does she live on the beach? Probably. I think I think she lives on the beach. Yeah. We watched this old TV show called um, Magnum PI. And it's in Hawaii and they live on the beach. It's cool. OK. <laughs> All right. So um, she's obviously this looking in fridge. Well, this is really not cooperating with me today. Looking, every time I try to write, I get this looking in fridge. Why is this happening? Okay, um, <laughs> let's see. So does she have friends coming over or something? Probably. Yeah, she's getting ready for a party. Oh boy, that's a picture. <laughs> Having your host coming to your host's house to have a party, but the host is gone. The <laughs> fridge is open, and there's a bloody knife in the fridge. Oh. <laughs> okay, so there's a party. There's a party planned, and she. Um, she's getting the food. 
Well, y'all, getting food. Uh, this is not working. Do y'all, yeah, can y'all understand what I'm writing here? Because I'm telling you, getting food ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, I have an idea. What? Um, who's the guy who kept breaking his bones a few months back? What's his name? Breaking his yeah. bones. What was was he like an actor or what? No, what we were Jake talking. To, it was in our class and we. we oh, were like, oh, it was Jacob. <laughs> Oh, we, were making that, we were making that up about Jacob, I think. Weren't we, Jacob? Great. Jacob could fall through the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know where that would fit in, but that's definitely a possibility. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's think about what happened before this picture that might have made this happen. Um, I have an idea. Okay. What's an idea? So... From picture one, two, and three, between one and two, Jacob could fall through the ceiling, and that's why Wanda's in shock. And then she goes <laughs> and runs over to Jacob to make sure he's sure he's okay. Oh, Jacob, say something so you'll appear on my little screen here. What do you feel about this, Jacob? It's good. <laughs> you don't object. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um... Um, her friend, Jacob, um, well, y'all, I don't think I've ever had this actually happen before. Jacob is expected. Okay, what do you, what do you want to say, Cooper? Um, shouldn't you be recording? Yeah, I, well, I, I was recording. Am I not recording anymore? You're still recording. Oh, you're still recording. Okay, okay. Jacob is, that's supposed to say, is expected. I'm sorry, but every time I put my pen on this, let me let me try to do this again and see if there's something going on here that's making my, I think this is my word problem. I don't think it's my graphic tablet causing this. Jacob is expected. Well, that's supposed to be the word expected, you guys. Oh, um, he, he loves ice cream. What about that? He, do you love ice cream, Jacob? Say something, Jacob, so you'll appear on the screen. I do. Okay, good, good. What kind of ice cream do you like? Cookies and cream. He loves cookies and cream. Okay, cookies and cream. Okay. All right. So, um, y'all, this is not this is not very good. I'm just going to write this in my handbook and tell y'all what I'm writing because it's not working here. Okay. Do we have to write about this or is this just an example? No, no. This is just to show you how you go about build, fixing up a keyword outline. You're not going to be writing about this picture at all. Okay. So in the next one, Wanda is shocked. Okay. I'm writing this down in my book so I can go back and recreate this later. Let's see. I'm going to try again. Wanda. Okay, this is just not working. I'm going to do stop screen share here. And I'm going to open up the PDF and see if that one will work better. Wanda. Even though, <clears throat> even though um, Please. even though the writing won't no. stay, won't cooperate. Hold on just a minute. Okay, so J Wanda is shocked. And while we're waiting for this PDF to open up, why is Wanda shocked? Because there's... Uh, no food. Huh? There is no food. Okay. We know we're particularly looking for cookies and cream ice cream, right? Yes. And obviously, there's no cookies and cream ice cream. Um, something has devoured it. 
There was cookies and cream ice cream. She is very upset, obviously. Okay, y'all. We can kind of look at the last picture to think of why it might there might not be any cookies and cream ice cream. She like um, I don't know. She is there a man eating plant in there? Maybe she felt maybe she take she tried to take it out of the fridge and it fell down out of her hand. Oh well, she could have. She could have. Let me try this one more time, y'all. I don't really understand this. Wanda, oops, it's the wrong pen. Wanda is shocked. Okay, I'm gonna put it back on the screen share. I can't do the PDF, the thing won't work with my PDF with the kind of, <clears throat> with the version that I opened. Okay, Wanda is shocked. Let's escape. Okay, this is good. Let's go. Wanda is shocked. No ice cream. I'm just going to put IC, okay? All right. And why did you say that there wasn't any? Who said that? I didn't read. She felt because she tried to take it out and it fell out of her hand. Oh, yes. Okay. Ice. Cream. Fell. Okay. And okay. Now, we'd have to think about um, how is this being done or said? Let's see. She only has 30 minutes till the party. Okay, I know we were talking about possibly Jacob falling through the ceiling. But <laughs> I don't know how we can fit that in here. Okay, now you want to keep asking questions. Let's see. She, let's go down to the last picture. Okay, I do want at least five facts for each of these, for each of these pictures. But we're going to go down here right now because obviously what happened to Wanda? You can't see it in this picture. She fell down. Yeah, but where, where is she going though? To the floor. Yeah, Wanda, she's going to go get some more ice cream, right? Wanda runs out. I'm going to I'm going to make this up you guys when we get back. Okay? Let me write this in my book. Okay. Wanda runs out. to store, right? Um, and obviously, what has she done? She left fridge open. Okay. <clears throat> then what? All the food spoils. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, all the yeah, the cold, the cold, the cold gets out. I, I'm not sure food would spoil while she ran to the grocery store, but obviously, she she does she gets stuck in a traffic jam, which is a real thing in Hawaii. Let's see, uh, Cooper and Haley, didn't y'all live in Hawaii? Okay, I'm thinking about somebody from a different class. Oh, okay, I'm thinking about Hannah. Okay. Um, the traffic is terrible in Hawaii. So she gets stuck in traffic. In the meanwhile, 
back at the house, who do you think shows up? Uh, Jacob. Jacob. Jacob arrives. No wonder. Oh, God. No ice cream. <laughs> God. No um, huh? No party. No party. Okay, so what do you think? Oh, no. Do you think do you think Wanda finally gets back? No. Oh, she dies. She never comes back. <laughs> <laughs> never. Never. Okay, so if you want, if your story took a more uh, sinister turn, you might have something like a knife in the refrigerator, like Haley said. Okay, Haley, what's your idea? She got into a car crash and went to the hospital. Ah. That ends the saga of the of the ice cream party. Okay. <clears throat> so this is how you go about thinking about a story, okay? And I'm giving y'all lots of pictures to choose from. But you're going to actually make out a little keyword outline. I do have a form printed up for you. Let's see. I'm going to, uh, on, the, on the website that you can print. Let me get out of here. <clears throat> okay. So... This, I didn't do all of it for the other two, but say this is my very simple keyword outline. Is it okay to have six to ten um, facts for your picture on your keyword outline if you want to? Yes. Yes. Now, you don't have to know all of the details when you start to write, but I do want you to have at least five facts okay. on your keyword outline for each part, for each picture, okay? And what, what do you think will probably happen when you actually start writing? Haley? Um, I have a question. Okay, let's answer this question first. Say you don't have a really, really good story in mind, but you have a basic outline. What do you think is going to happen when you actually start writing? Years will come to you. Yeah, they will. Things will come to you. You'll get more ideas. But um, the ideas won't really come until you actually start doing it. Have y'all experienced that when you're writing? Okay. Sometimes it doesn't happen until the next day when you go back and look at it, right? And then the next day you go, oh, I have an idea. Has that ever happened to anybody in this class um, when you were writing? Did you get some ideas? Or you look back and you think, ah, oh, that's really boring. How could I say that in a more interesting way? And then you get an idea. But it doesn't happen until you actually start writing. That's why Pearl S. Buck, the author of the book Annie Road reviewed, that's why she said, I don't wait for moods. You never accomplish anything if you do that. Your mind must know it has got to get down to work. Okay, so... Madeline Lingle, if any of you have ever read Wrinkle in Time, Swiftly Pelting Planet, those books, Madeline, Madeline Lingle said, think before you're writing, think after you're writing, but don't think while you're writing. When you're writing, just start writing. doesn't matter if you're having great ideas while you're writing. You just start and the thinking and the ideas will come, Okay. That's why a lot of people never actually do very well with their writing. They try to wait until they have really good ideas. And then they don't get any ideas. So they just keep putting it off and it just gets worse and worse and worse. Anybody else ever experience that? I have. So, so just go ahead and get started and then you can make your story better. Okay. Now let's look at a story that somebody actually did write using this picture. Some of you may have already read it. I'm sure some of you have gone through and read everything, all the examples you have, Trey. I was that person in school. Yes. They'd give me my, my English uh, literature book for the school year and I'd go home and read most of it that first weekend. And then the rest of the year was really boring. Okay, so look on page 148, and let's see an idea of a story that somebody actually wrote. And she did use the story structure. 
As I've said before, it doesn't have to be an actual story structure. You can just describe what you think is going on and around this picture, okay? It doesn't have to have a conflict. It doesn't have to have a climax. But if you write it that way, you can. Does that make sense? So um, this is what Zoe actually did. She actually did write one with a story structure from that picture that we just looked at. Okay, so on page 148, Stulte's hero. I don't know how people think of things like this, but anyway. Running and panting heavily, Ahuva was certain that the portal to Earth must be somewhere in the back of her brother's refrigerator. How do people think of these things? I don't know. Ahuva knew that if she could only find the portal and get help from Earth, she could save their planet. Her cerulean eyes darted warily. Notice the uh, descriptives. They are underlined and, and, and italicized, okay? Her cerulean eyes darted warily, and her strawberry blonde locks whipped behind her as she ran. As her feet began once more to pound the rugged streets of gloomy planet Stulte, Ahuva again recounted the grim events of the past years. Twelve years ago, in 2052, Miletus from Splanet Galeratus had selfishly invaded Ahuva's planet. Over the past years, Miletus had been slowly enforcing his dictatorial laws using his army of Maloons. Dreaming of revolution, several of the Nadio, Ahuva's people, had formed various groups intended on defeating Miletus and the Maloons. Regrettably, Ahuva's brother had been taken captive by Miletus because he had been discovered as a ringleader of one of the revolutionary groups. He had left a clue. A portal to Earth was in his refrigerator. <laughs> Finally, she arrived at her brother's humble residence. Crashing through the house, she eventually reached the refrigerator. Here's the first picture. She suddenly, so you see her at the refrigerator somewhere at the beginning, and then you see all of what happened to make her go to the refrigerator. And at the end of the paragraph, she's at the refrigerator, okay? She suddenly whipped around. Her hand flew to her mouth. As she hastily scrutinized the interior of the fridge, Ahuva could hear the Malums crashing behind her through her brother's home in relentless pursuit. She stopped searching for a split second to hurriedly reassess the Malum's distance behind her. They were not far. The Malums were ashen gray with pointed teeth, immense muscles, and wicked laughter. Their evil looks sent chills up Ahuva's spine. She hurriedly brushed her strawberry blonde hair out of her face as she continued to forage for the portal. Despite Ahuva's frantic efforts, she failed to discover the portal. Gasping, she let out a squeal. What if she never found the portal? Dolefully, she began to cry because she could not find it. And there you go, um, Trey. There's an L-Y that's been used as a descriptive. Um, third Third picture. Once more, she investigated the fridge. Cautiously, she shoved aside a chartreuse plant to reveal a knob. Recounting her brother's words, she abruptly recalled what he had described. When she pulled the knob, the refrigerator's interior suddenly opened into a cavernous cylindrical room. Earth's smoky black sky poured starlight into the roofless cavern. Water trickled down the walls. In the middle of the room, a swirling obsidian hallway. Her heart leaped with joy because she knew she had found the portal. The fridge door closed behind her as she stepped into the room. Audaciously, Ahuva plunged into the churning abyss. Breathless, she arrived on Earth through a garbage can <laughs> and soon received help from the humans. Ahuva had saved the Nadio from the tyranny of Miletus and became a forever remembered heroine in Planet Stalti's history. Very creative. I couldn't have come up with that. But you don't have to come up with something that creative. All you have to do is describe what's going on in the pictures using good descriptive language and asking yourself lots of questions, okay? okay. Does it have to be that sophisticated? Yes, Trey. Can you use dialogue in this story? You can, but you're limited to 300 words per paragraph. And you know, when you start doing a lot of dialogue, that runs up the word count really fast, right? <clears throat> so I wouldn't try to use more than one or two sentences per paragraph. Does that make sense? Okay. 
Um, let's look at the choices that you have for your pictures. I've tried to do quite a few in here with different things, and I um, look on page 179. This is where the picture started. You pick one set of three pictures, okay? So they start on 179 and 180, 181, 182, 183, 184. And then I have a series, those are all photos that I actually took off um, friends' Facebook a long time ago. I asked their permission. I said, I, I'd like to do a picture series from some of your pictures on your Facebook. Is that okay? And I got their permission. And they've been in here ever since. All these people are grown up and gone on to careers and amazing things. And then on 185 to 188, I have a series of pictures that one of my students actually wrote for me. So um, one time a couple of years ago, somebody asked me if it was okay if they reordered the pictures, you know, like, they wanted the third one to be second or something like that. And it is, it is, if you if you have a story idea and you want to put the pictures in a different order, that's fine. But the way I thought of the pictures, I thought that this was the best order, okay? Um, so I want you to pick a set that really interests you, okay? Okay. Um, and I have background on all these pictures, but I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't want to poison your thinking. <laughs> okay, let's see. Does anybody know for sure which picture set they would like to do? Okay, Trey, which one are you going to do? The one with the crayons. Ah, yes, that's always popular. That's a, that's a really interesting set of pictures. Now, um, 186 is a really interesting set. It's kind of metaphorical, you know? And so sometimes people really enjoy doing that one. But I, I always have people, all, people write about all of these pictures. So it's, um, that's really fun for me because then I don't have to read a whole bunch of papers all based on one picture set. So I want you to pick the one that you think you would like the most. Let's see. Haley, what are you thinking of? Um, so my question from earlier was, can I do the one we said where she dropped the ice cream or something? Can I do those yeah. pictures? No, don't do that one unless you've got a story that's completely different from the one that's in the handbook and from the one that we discussed in class. Do you? I can make up one. Well, you can. You can do that if you want to. Um, I just don't want it to resemble anything that we talked about. Okay. All right. And uh, that's why I that's why I took that pic set of pictures out of circulation because I didn't want anybody's thinking to be disturbed. <laughs> but if you can do it and you really want to, I won't stop you. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, who else knows what set of pictures they would like to do? Cooper, what are you going to do? It's set of pictures on 182. 182. 182. Okay. Great. Had some very different and creative stories written from that, even though it looks so uh, just so normal. So, um, uh, and Ani Rude, were you about to say something? The one on 179. 179. Oh, yeah. That's a fun one. Okay. I might want to do either one on 182 or the one on 183. Okay. Are, was that you, Cross, to say that? Yes. Okay. All right. And remember, you can describe things that what happened before or after the pictures. You can describe things that are outside of the pictures. Just because it's not in the picture doesn't mean you can't include it in your story, okay? The only thing you can't do is write something that actually contradicts something that's in the picture, 
Okay. All right. Um, who else has an idea of what they might like to do? The pictures that originally came with the IEW course were really boring. I don't know if they've ever changed those or not, but um, I was, I, I'd look at those pictures and I would just be like, what on earth? So that's when I went checking around to see if I could possibly get something that was a little bit more interesting. Okay. Um, any other questions about this before we go? Because it is time for me to let you go. I'm, I will I will write up a keyword outline for the one that we were thinking about and post it for you just so you can see it. But not because I want you to imitate my keyword outline, okay? Yeah, Trey. Oh, well, I can't hear you. Is it true that there are only five days in the uh, assignment page? Um, yeah, if you if you decide to write it that way, let's see. Oh, yeah, I should probably talk to you all about it. OK, so we're on page um, 224. You can actually get this done in five days if you do it like I say. OK. Um, so we we could do it in five days, but we have three weeks. Yes. Oh, Ryan, before you got here, I talked about the schedule. This is one of those class periods that we have three weeks between classes instead of just two because we have spring break. OK, so the class won't meet again until three weeks from today. I'll try to send out a reminder about that. OK. Um, so because we have the masters here in Augusta um, for during that first full week of April. Um, so, yes, uh, so tomorrow you sit and decide which pictures you're going to use and go ahead and make your keyword outline. And then you write a, a paragraph over the next three days for each of them. Make sure you take them to your editor as you finish them. And then on the last day, you go back and improve your story and make your changes. Now, is it OK to spend more than five days if you want to? Yeah, you can go back and keep. Keep fancying that story up all you want to, okay? But you can get done with the basic work in five days if you do it like I have it in the handbook. Isn't that nice? Yes. Okay, so the next time you come back, we will be talking about, we will be preparing for the final exam. I don't want anybody to get all weirded out about the final exam because it's just one paragraph and you're all perfectly capable of doing it. Okay? And we will be... Huh? I had a question. Okay. Uh, so are we meeting a back on the 11th or? Yes, and, and remember y'all, I have a I have this posted on ThinkWave. Okay. If, you, if you haven't printed one of these out, do. But our class will meet again on the 11th, April 11th, okay? And I expect the papers to be so good because okay. they're not that long. OK. Remember to mark your descriptive words. Okay. And how do we mark our descriptive words? Bold underline. Bold underline. Um, no, bold underline is the dress oh. ups. Italicized yeah. underline. Italicized underline. Yes, Catalina. Um, I was wondering, so do the descriptive words have to be adjectives? Because it says descriptive adjectives, but in the example, there was some that would. Yeah, like we were talking about, I, I sort of hesitate to muddy the waters, but if it's descriptive, I don't care what part of speech it is, okay? What I want is descriptive. I don't particularly want adjectives. There are plenty of adjectives that are not descriptive, okay? But the word screeched, that's a verb, but it's definitely descriptive, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to use descriptive verbs or if you want to use descriptive LYs, that's fine. If you just want to get words off the list, those are all ad adjectives, okay? okay? So I don't want anybody to get confused about that. So if you don't really understand what I'm talking about, just stick to the list, okay? All right, but yes, Catalina, it's fine to use other parts of speech that are descriptive.
Okay. Okay. Um, so that's the main thing about this. I want you to describe. Now, um, Zoe had a whole bunch more descriptive words in her paragraph that could have been marked, and you can mark as many descriptives as you like. The more, the merrier. Okay. Okay. She could have marked 10 probably in that middle paragraph at least. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions before I let you go? Okay. Ryan, have you done the writing from pictures before? Yeah. Okay. So this is not a mystery to you. Okay. I'm glad that it was this class that you had to be late for. <laughs> that works out better. Okay. Now, if you decide you do have some questions, please get in touch with me because if you have questions, other people probably do too. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. See you guys in three weeks. Have a good time. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Yeah.